let's talk about periodic trends. The periodic table is set up by increasing atomic number, which indicates the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. The rows going across the periodic table are, unsurprisingly, called periods. Elements in the same period have the same number of energy levels. The columns going down the periodic table are called groups. Elements in the same group have the same number of valence, or outermost, electrons, but have different numbers of energy levels. Now that you know how the periodic table is set up, let's talk about periodic trends. Trends show us that the organization of the periodic table can tell us a lot about the behavior of many elements. We'll start off with atomic radius. The atomic radius is half the distance between two adjacent nuclei in the solid state. In this video, I'll be using arrows to indicate the direction in which a characteristic increases. The atomic radius of an element increases from right to left and down on the periodic table. Recall from earlier when we said that as you move down a group, the number of energy levels increases. Well, as you add energy levels, you are also increasing the distance between electrons and the nucleus, and that is why we say that atomic radius increases down a group. So now let's talk about why it increases from right to left, or really decreases across a period. As you move across a period, the number of protons and electrons increase. Electrons remain in the same energy level. As the positive nuclear charge increases, the electrons are gradually pulled towards the center of the atom due to increased attraction between the nucleus and electrons. So, atomic radius decreases across a period. Ionic radius is pretty similar, but instead of group or period trends, it follows cation and anion trends. When positive cations form, they lose electrons and often energy levels too, like in this lithium ion. Once again, attraction between the nucleus and electrons increase, and ionic radius shrinks. When anions form, an atom gains electrons, sometimes in the same energy levels. There is more repulsion between the added electrons and they push out, increasing atom size. Next is ionization energy, the amount of energy needed to remove the most loosely bound electron from an atom. Remember that across a period, nuclear charge increases, while the energy level remains constant. The electrons and protons are more attracted to each other, so it is harder to remove an electron. As you move down a group, the number of energy levels increases, so there is more distance and less attraction between nucleus and electron, so less energy is required to remove an electron. Successive ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove successive electrons in their successive shells. With each electron removed, ionization energy will increase, because inner electrons are increasingly attracted to the nucleus. You should see a big increase in ionization energy after all the valence electrons are removed, because it takes significantly more energy to remove electrons from a stable configuration. We can use this knowledge to predict the number of valence electrons of an element. Take a look at this chart. Using lithium as our example, the first ionization energy is much lower than the second, meaning that there is one electron that is very loosely bound and easy to remove, so there is one valence electron. In beryllium, there is a big jump between the second and third ionization energy, so there are two valence electrons, and so on. Finally, we have electronegativity, an atom's power to attract electrons when bonding. Electronegativity increases across a period because the number of protons increases, leading to an increasingly positive nucleus. Therefore, the atom's attractiveness to electrons is high. Electronegativity also increases up a group, or really, decreases down a group. This is because going down, the number of energy levels increases, leading to low attraction between the nucleus and electrons. As a result, the power to attract electrons when bonding is low. In the top right of the periodic table, fluorine is the most reactive element, and gains electrons easily when bonding. This is because it has a high electronegativity. On the other hand, Cesium with a low electronegativity is found in the bottom left and is the least reactive element. It loses electrons easily. And now you know all about periodic trends. 
Thanks for watching.